If you've always found that Elementor's page styling settings are a little bit lacking at present, then I think this video is going to help you out. I recently released a video on how to use Elementor Pro without a theme, and even though I said it is without a theme, and basically that's exactly what's happening, one of the things you need to do to keep WordPress happy is to have at least a minimal theme installed. And we use the Hello theme because it works so well with Elementor and pretty much is blank, so speed is something that really comes into its own on there. But one of the comments that come up time and time again when looking at the Hello theme was, how would you go about styling the text? What if you wanted to do things for different headings, for the, the sort of the body text, different things like that? Those things are kind of lacking when it comes to Elementor and Elementor Pro currently, but I've come across a free plugin. And while that plugin is basically giving you a range of free templates you can use with Elementor, it does have a new beta feature, which I'm kind of hoping they'll just take out and actually give this as a plugin in its own right and something that we can use globally throughout Elementor, at least until Elementor actually bring this to the core. But what that is, if we jump over and take a look at analogwp.com, you'll see that we have all of these cool looking templates available. So the template library and so on and so forth. That's pretty cool. Download that if you want to and take a look at it. But what they've got is this new beta feature that allows us to go through and set the styling for each individual page. Now I'm hoping this will be something that they'll spread out to the entire core sort of function inside Elementor if they start to elaborate upon what it does. So in other words, we can make this change once and everything that uses for example, the H1 tag, the H3 tag, and so on, will have that change reflected in it. And that would be something I think is going to set this apart and make it a real must-have for most designers. But for now, we have some limitations, but it is still in beta. I want to show you how we use it. Before I do, I just want to say a big thank you to Dave Foy. If you've never heard of Dave Foy, which I'm pretty sure you probably have, check out his website, Design Build Web. He has some fantastic video tutorials, both free and paid for, that are going to get you up to speed with a ton of really cool knowledge, all about elemental landing pages and sales funnels and so much more. Check out Dave Foy, check out his YouTube channel. I'll drop some links in the de description below so you can take a look at Dave's information. I highly recommend it. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's just jump over into our page inside WordPress itself. I've gone ahead and installed Analog WP. You can see that adds in a new section now, Analog WP. And if we click and go into there, this is going to show us all of the different free templates we can start to grab and use if we want to. However, we're not interested in that right now. We're interested in the settings panel. I'm going to jump over to there and we've got a couple of things we can do. Most important thing we want is this where it says other settings and the checkbox for enable beta feature. Hit that and you are done. All you need to do is hit that and we're good to go. So what I do next is I'm going to jump over to a page and we're going to take a look at what this brings to it. So let's come over to all our pages and we're going to go ahead and then just open up a page that I want to work with. So I'm going to edit this one. Once we've done that, we're going to open up Elementor as you'd expect to see. Now, if we take a look, everything looks pretty normal. I've got a typical example page on here with some columns and rows and graphics and things along those lines. Nothing you wouldn't expect. However, where are those new settings? If we scroll through, you can see there's no additional widgets in there for Analog WP. If we come through to the settings area, we've got nothing in there that denotes it. However, if we come down to the settings cog in the bottom left-hand corner, click and open that up, jump over to the Styles tab, we now have some additional columns of information we can start to edit and style. So if we want to, we can do things like change the background type and adjust global padding, which is pretty cool. We can also go through and control those things on any kind of device. But what I'm more interested in are the next four options, body and paragraph typography, headings typography, sizes, and column gaps. So if we jump into the body and paragraph typography, you can see we've got body typography and paragraph primary text. Now, what you're going to find is these things cascade through. So you're going to find that if you change the body typography, that will cascade down to the paragraph typography as well. So you need to be careful when you're using these that you use the right one for the right purpose. So for example, if we come in and change the body typography, anything inside the actual body of our content that uses the typography will be updated. So you can see as we change this, our heading changes, our content changes, our navigation, all those kinds of things change, which isn't in this example what we want. So I'm going to reset that. We've also then got the paragraph or the primary text. So if we make changes to this, this you can see this now only affects the paragraphs that we have inside our design. So our navigation at the top isn't affected. However, the content we have below in these two columns is affected. 
So we can now come in and change any of the information we want on here, change the fonts, change the size of the fonts, the weight of the fonts, the line heights, and so on. So all those things could be controlled now throughout this entire page. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's okay, but it's not the most intuitive, easiest thing to work with. However, if you link this through to Elementor Pro or Elementor, we're using the templating structure, it is going to speed up the process because you can easily come back in, make one tweak, and anywhere that's using that on that entire template will be updated accordingly. So it's much quicker and easier than going through and changing each individual entry for a particular heading if it falls outside some of the very basic styling that we have inside Elementor itself. So it would be great to see this be spread out across this sort of global site so we can make one change in here and anything that uses the paragraph throughout the entire site, no matter what page template is using or individual page or post, all of those are updated. So fingers crossed, this will be something they'll bring with it in a future update. Bear in mind, this is still the beta version, so there are going to be some bugs and some quirks and things that don't necessarily work the way we'd expect them to. But I think it's a great starting point. Okay, so we can see how easy it is now to change that paragraph text and everything will update accordingly. So next up, we have the headings typography section. If we click and open that out, you can see we can now go through and style and control either headings globally or headings one through six individually. So if we change the headings font from something like the default to, let's just say, for example, quicksand and click on there, you'll see absolutely nothing happens throughout our site. All our headings stay the same at the default font. Why is that? Well, it's very simple. Let's just update this page so we save and commit those changes. Let's just jump back out and exit to our dashboard, head over to Elemental and Settings, and in there, under the General tab, you see we've got Disable Default Fonts. Check in this box will disable Elemental's default fonts and make Elemental inherit the fonts from your theme. Now, even though we're not technically using a theme, if we check that and just save our changes, come back into our page, Go back in and edit with Elementor and back into the settings for the page in the bottom left hand corner. Come into our style tab and come into our headings. You'll see all our headings have now changed to show quicksand. I'll just put something else in there. So let's just say we'll go for this racing sands and you can see everything updates accordingly. So it's just something to bear in mind that currently you need to disable the default fonts from Elementor to see these changes. But once you've done that, then they will reflect throughout the page and template. And now if you want to go through and set anything to do with any of those headings, you can easily come into any setting. And if you want to override those, we can change that to a different font just for the H3. And then you see anything that's not a H3 will not have that change reflected in it. So we get global control using the default headings font. And we also get individual heading type control very easily through this simple control panel. So let's just reset that back to its default values. I like the look of that. Next up, we've got the sizes panel. Now, what does this do? This is actually really, really cool. This allows you to change and control the styling based upon the small, medium, large, XL and XXL values. What does that mean? If you don't use it, it's something you may not have come across in the past. But let's just come through, click to edit, edit our actual heading. You can see the size is set to default. That means it's going to be controlled by the default values for the heading one through six. However, we can change that if we want to and still retain the HTML tag that's associated with it. Let me give you an example. Let's change that from default and we'll go for large. You can see there's a little tweak in there. If we come through to extra large, nothing really happens. Come through to XXL, it gets bigger. But we can now control the values for that XXL, that XL and so on. So if you are using that size reference, you can now style and control that as well. Let me just show you an example. So that's still using H3, which is the same value as this one on the right hand side. However, you can see because we've set the size to XXL and not default, they are different. If we come back over to our settings, back into our style and back into our headings, sorry, back into sizes. Because we choose the XXL, you can see the XL is styled. That's why we saw that kind of quirk before. Let's just clear that value. And let's just say the XXL, you can see as I adjust that, that XXL value is adjusting accordingly, but they're still both using the H3 tag. So like I say, if you want to control those and style those using the small through XL, XXL values, you can do that. You can also use pixels, M's, REMs, and VW values. You can even come in and control exactly how they look on the different size of devices you're using from a desktop, tablet, and mobile. So that opens up a range of really cool ways of using the sizes and controlling how they look on any given device. So I'll just take that off there. 
The final thing we have are the column gaps. Click and open that up. Now columns have been very, very useful inside Elementor for quite some time. They allow us to control the amount of space around each of our individual columns when using a multi-column layout, like we've got in front of us at the moment. So we've got a left and a right hand column. And if we come through and click on that particular row column, Take a look at our layout, you can see our column gap is set to default and we can go through and we can set that to wider, we can set it to no gap, narrow, whatever we want. But we're still stuck with those default values that are assigned inside Elementor itself. We can't control those values until now. Click through back on our settings, come back into style and we can come into column gaps and now we can adjust any of the values in there and we can adjust those values based upon pixels, M's and percentages and also on the devices being viewed upon. So if we want to change those on the desktop, a tablet and a mobile, we can do that. So let's take a look. We set these to be narrow. Currently they're using the default values. However, if I want to change those and let's just go for something quite extreme and say 50 pixels, once we do that, that now changes accordingly. However, we come back and change these from being narrow to a different value. So we say extended, for example, you can see they then go back to the default values associated through Elementor with the extended column gap. So having the ability to control those makes it really easy to come in and start styling out to make sure everything looks the way you want. And like I say, if you use the default values, you can set that in there and then you can increase those based upon whatever you want on any of the other values that you have available to you. And that's pretty much what's covered in this. Like I say, it is still in beta. There are going to be some quirks, so I definitely wouldn't recommend using this on a production website. Use it on a test website. Give it a try. See what you think of it. Hopefully, they will be releasing this where it covers global values. I've contacted them and hopefully they'll come back to me with some information on what they intend to do with this and whether it's going to be tied into the analog WP sort of themes that you can download or the sort of templates you can download, or if they're looking to release this as something as a standalone product, which I hope they really do. So that's pretty much what I want to cover in this video. Hopefully what you can see is if you use this alongside something like the Hello theme, you can create a very, very quick loading website. You now have more control of some of those key values. Tie that into Elementor Pro's theme setup and you have a very versatile way of creating much more customizable websites without the need to invest huge amounts of time, effort and money into it. And there we go. That's pretty much what I want to cover. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have, let me know in the comment section below. Do you think this is something you could integrate into your workflow when they release it fully? Have you tested it out yourself? Did you like it? Didn't you like it? What would you like to see in future iterations of this particular plugin? I'd love to get your feedback, so please drop those in the comment section below. Speaking of the comment section, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine, but let me know what you did or didn't like about it in the comment section. As always, all applicable links are in the description below. My name's been Paul C, and this has been WP Tats, and until next time, Take care.